Today's topic is a bit abstract, because to understand it, we need to flip the calendar back to the late 80s. Console gaming was the up-and-coming next evolution of the video game industry. Even then, the creators of the popular arcade game Pac-Man were pulling 40% of their revenue from game sales on the Nintendo Famicom system. This success brought both them and Hudson Soft the special privilege of producing their own cartridges, maximizing profits. Our story truly begins in 1989, when this license was up for renewal, and when Nintendo revoked it. Masaya Nakamura, the founder and president of Namco, complained to Nintendo, publicly. The game industry is still new. I want it to grow soundly. Nintendo is monopolizing the market, which is not good for the future of the industry. Nintendo should consider itself the leader of the video game industry and accept the responsibility that goes with it. That was not the only complaint that Namco gave. It was accompanied by a lawsuit against Nintendo for monopolistic business practices. Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamuichi responded. Frankly, Namco is envious of us. If they are not satisfied with the Nintendo and the way we do business, they should create their own market. That is the advantage of the free market. Namco did just that, moving their support over to the Sega Genesis and Dreamcast, the Sony PlayStation, and eventually, the Xbox. This move cemented them as a sworn competitor of the industry behemoth. You see, this was in the era of the console wars, where developers were not ashamed to sling mud at their competitors. Namco was unable to successfully boycott Nintendo due to monetary struggles. Now missing 40% of their revenue, they were forced to drop the lawsuit and obtain a standard Nintendo development contract just like everyone else, from a very smug Nintendo. In the following years, they would release a few games on Nintendo consoles here and there, but the vast majority of their releases were not on Nintendo systems. At this point in the story, we have reached the early 2000s, and Hiroshi Yamuichi is succeeded by Satoru Iwata. With the GameCube falling behind competitors, Iwata began restructuring Nintendo, reaching out and befriending Capcom. Enter Pac-Man World 2, finally! This game was released on the GameCube a few months prior to Iwata becoming head of Nintendo. Over the next few years, it became the 56th best-selling game among all three consoles, prompting Nintendo to rebrand the game as a player's choice title and repackage it with Pac-Man Versus. This was the very first instance of the two companies collaborating. Not only was this game developed by Shigeru Miyamoto himself, but the announcer of the game sounded very familiar. Yes, this was Charles Martinet as Mario. Even as a child, I found this awkward. Like two divorced parents, peacefully eating Thanksgiving dinner together for your sake alone. Ah, pumpkin and crow pie definitely helps digest one's swallowed pride. Would you pass the differences that I set aside, dear? This marked the end of a conflict caused by the pride of two companies. Nintendo would later permit Namco to include Link in Soul Calibur 2. In 2005, Namco would merge with another company on good standings with Nintendo, Bandai, to become Bandai Namco. In 2007, Nintendo would finish their slow acquisition of Monolith Soft from Bandai Namco. During my research, my intent was to place Pac-Man World 2 into the timeline of Namco's estrangement and reconciliation. I was surprised to find out that this game was actually the catalyst. This game had a part to play in Bandai Namco and Nintendo being on such good terms today, and without it, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate might not have had the Bandai Namco logo in its credits. I'll wager to guess that many of you are surprised to hear that there had been bad blood between these two companies. I still find it strange whenever they do anything together. When I was a kid, it was common knowledge that they were competitors, and yet I was hard-pressed to find any proof that they were once public antagonists. I'm certain that neither of them wants this era to cast a shadow over their current collaborations. What's odd is that they tempted fate by re-releasing Pac-Man vs. on the Switch, but I'm glad they did. It's memento of their rekindled partnership that should be recognized now that Bandai Namco has developed Smash Ultimate.